The Real Estate Revolution Radio Show is designed to educate Missoula homeowners and home buyers how to navigate the uncharted waters of the current Western Montana real estate market in an educational, often edgy, and high energy fashion with host Jason Baker. Jason will teach you all the secrets on how to win with real estate, from listing your property to purchasing investments. Jason has you covered. Be sure to check the home of the week, the good news, and current market updates each week. Jason is revolutionizing the real estate experience for over 100 clients a year. Welcome to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Jason, how are we doing on this fine Sunday? We are doing amazing. What are you doing? I'm I'm enjoying uh, the the sun. Uh, Apparently, (laughs) radio DJs and real estate agents work eight days a week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, here it is. It's Sunday. Uh Uh-huh. You know, it's noontime. I mean, shouldn't we be smoking brisket? Uh, Why have one on? Uh, uh, You do? Oh, yeah. Oh. I, just, my pellet, I must have just not have got that. My invite. pellet smoker. It's a, <laughs> it's a set it and forget it. Set it, it kind forget of it. Thing. Yeah. You got a little app on the. I got a little app on my phone. Oh, it's just I great. It, it, I, that's not even fair. It was so funny because I was uh, so so twice. You know, because for a real estate agent, you know what I'm saying. We I don't we don't pass an IQ test. I'm not sure if you knew. <laughs> like we pass this realtor test. I think it's just to make sure you can read. But we definitely. So I got the new smoker. I got it from Costco. I fired up. You know, use it about ten times, and every time the app is telling me you need to clean this thing. Yeah, you need to clean this thing, and I'm like. <laughs> So, you know, it's like one of those things you can like swipe right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't need to clean that thing. Yeah. If this thing's quality, you don't need to clean it. Ignore it. So I, I'm out there. I got a brisket on. And, you know, briskets don't take a minute to cook. They, you know, take a good long time. Mm-hmm. And I go and I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, I smell the smoke rolling. Everything's great. And then I go out there and it ain't rolling anymore. What happened? Yeah. Well, I got, I got to clean my grill. You got to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> so there it's at. <laughs> Dry aging in the 80 degree heat for two hours with no smoke, yeah, you know. Yeah, and you didn't eat till midnight. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. That's exactly right. Yeah, we ate it for breakfast the next morning with the omelets. Yeah. So, um, I've been there. so needless to say, I got the shop vac over there. I started, you know, I, I op- pulled everything off, <laughs> shop vac that baby out, man. She's been working good mm-hmm. ever since. Yeah. yeah. It's working so good, I haven't used it. <laughs> yeah, because you're afraid of the app bossing you around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like my GPS. We have a, we have a British gal that works for one of our teams, and I think in uh, Indiana, and uh, and I go, gosh, you know, Amanda. Every single time I turn on my car, I get I got a gal that sounds just like you yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> turn left. Turn yeah. left here. It's, it's so funny. Yeah, and then my wife commences from there. But anyway, so welcome to Real Estate Revolution. It's Sunday Fun Day. We got it, Casey's got stuff smoking on the barbecue, mm-hmm. and today we are going to be talking about a little bit what's going on in the Missoula area market. Um, last week we had inventory right around that 240 range we still do still so we increasing. haven't had an increase in our inventory okay mm-hmm. um, we've ta- we put three listings live here in the last few days we'll talk about at the end of the show which is great um, but yeah we're definitely seeing the but the the thing that we're noticing is the days on market are creeping up average days on markets around 88 to probably 90 today and that's just simply a byproduct of high rates a thousand dollars more mm-hmm. every month on their payment if they're not paying cash of course and uh, and just you know more houses less buyers because a lot of people left the market right and there's just more for them to choose from so it's kind of like what we're seeing is we're seeing that they're just there's a little pause in the market they're going buyers are saying hey am i going to get a better deal if i just wait a little while longer mm-hmm. right so so there's a little bit there but what they're fighting against is constantly raising or you know supposed to be raising interest rates so some of them are saying heck i don't care if i pay 5 or 10 grand more than i would in 6 months from now i just want that nice low payment because you know 5 or 10 grand on a payment is virtually nothing when there's always the opportunity to refinance down the road too yeah it's like you know Jesse was saying he said, Jesse said you know marry the house and date the payment right yeah. you, know, you, know, you know what i'm saying <laughs> sure date the rate well, yeah date, date the rate date the Right, that's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Yeah, I could never get it right, but that's okay. <laughs> you, got, you got to, why buy the cow? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. Or you could just leave it on the smoker for two hours not smoking. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, something like that. All so, sorts of good, good so stuff. I'm, I am so excited today because we're going to be talking about 1031s. And there are so, there's so much misinformation mm-hmm. out there. Like, I don't know anybody in the world who likes to pay taxes. Really? Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, I think it's it's kind of like I mos- just kind of like mosquito bites. I, you know, they sure are fun to scratch. Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> and pick them later. <laughs> no, gross. Mm. I, I yeah, love I, taxes and mosquito bites. Those yeah, are two I of my favorite things. Like I look at my kids and I'm like, I'm hoping like CPS doesn't come by the house because they're going to be like, what is wrong with these kids? I mean, what kind of a, like is that a monkey pox or yeah, chicken pox or what have, is that? No, that's called blood that's good. left in them. <laughs> yeah, that's called living in the swamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah Baker style. Yeah. yeah. No, they've got about nine thousand mosquito bites all over them from uh, from the farm. You know, we've got water everywhere, mm-hmm. and uh, man, I I'm just starting to have to water my hay again. Unbelievable. So, wow. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, ten thirty ones are on the menu for today. Okay, that's for sure. I want to learn more about ten thirty ones. Uh, we have special guests too. Yeah, we, I think we I think we do. Uh, are they still there? You think are, they've hung up? Are they on the line with us right now? I don't know. Hello. You better introduce these fine gentlemen. We're on the line, Jonathan the line, and baby. Max. We're... Uh, I was going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk uh, ten thirty ones. So keep it here. Gotcha. You're listening to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Hey, you've heard me talk about the fact that with interest rates going up now and likely a lot more in the future, Goldman Sachs even predicts eleven in two years. It will impact buyers' ability to buy a home. If you're thinking about selling your home, maybe you need to sell it now before more buyers get priced out of the market. Now more than ever, you need an experienced real estate agent that can bring you a smart strategy to generate multiple offers from the right buyers to net you the most money. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. He knows how to cut through all of the talk and to give you accurate information Now, don't just take my word for it. Get online and read all the five-star reviews. Put the most experience and the best marketing to work for you. Call Jason at 552-4443. That's 552-4443. Online, jasonbakerteam.com. That's jasonbakerteam.com. From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. Welcome back to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Uh, Jason, we're talking uh, 1031s today. That's, that's, what's a 1031? Oh, my. Dude, I have no clue. That's why I'm doing the radio show. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got two fine gentlemen who we're going to uh, have introduce themselves here in just a second. So, gentlemen, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the name of your company, your names, uh, how long you've been doing it, just a little background on the company and yourselves. So, fire away. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Max Hansen, and, and I'm here with Jonathan Barge, who uh, we're both attorneys. Uh, Jonathan works out of our office in Bozeman. I work out of an office here in Dillon, Montana, beautiful downtown Dillon, where the pavement ends and the west begins. I'm and, telling you uh, what, I was, in Dillon, for, I was in Dillon. I was in Dillon this whole weekend, trying to buy a really? house, baby. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was they're fishing hard on. Find, they're hard to find here too. My son caught a. He's, my son caught a 30 inch brown in Lisa's pond. Oh, wow. All right. Nice. Cool. I'll show you wow. a picture. Okay, well, I digress. We, we always talk about hunting and fishing and not, not 1031s in real estate. But anyway, go. <laughs> all right, fire away. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I saw the picture of your son. That was a monster brown. I don't know how many pounds that was. He didn't have time to weigh it because it was catch and release. But, man, that was awesome. Yeah, it was good. And he was excited, too. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, as I said, my name is Max Hansen. I'm an attorney. I've been around uh, Dillon. I was born here back in 1949. I started doing 1031 exchanges in 1978, so that kind of dates me. Um, I came back here in 76 from law school and had a law practice and then started an exchange company, American Equity Exchange, and uh, did exchanges um, and practiced law, and then I ended up selling my exchange business to accrue it. LLC, which is headquartered out of Denver. They are friendly competitors of mine for about 20 years, and it was a great move for me. Uh, also, some employees that I had here continued working for Accruit, and I uh, spend time here in the office in Dillon and also have an office in northern Utah, a little town called Plymouth, Utah, uh, about an hour north of Salt Lake. Uh, Jonathan joined us here this year, and I'll let you. I'll let Jonathan tell you a little bit about himself, and and then then we can talk a little bit more about the uh, specific stuff with regard to ten thirty ones. Awesome. Yeah, gentlemen, thanks for having me on the show here, Max and I. Uh, I prior to joining a crew, it I was in uh, public service for about twenty years, in the military for a bit, and uh, was a law enforcement officer here in Bozeman. And then decided, you know what, 
isn't just enough excitement. So I figured I'd go to the beautiful town of Missoula and, and go to law school. Finished up last year and then had the great privilege to uh, get on board with Max and, and work with him uh, with Accruit and learn everything there is to know about like kind exchanges and 31 exchanges. And it's been a real blast. So great to be on the show and, and uh, help educate some of the folks here when it comes to uh, these transactions and kind of dispel some of the myths and clarify uh, what's required when it comes to uh, exchanges of real property. So thanks for having me. I just have on. to ask, Cat or Grizz fan? Oh, yeah, good one. I, you know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, I mean, I you know, law that's school that's here, that's he, he's a Grizz point. there for a little while. I mean, are you cheating or, or, or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I honestly get to claim both because I went to undergrad <laughs> here at MSU and then I went to law school in Missoula. So, yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> Whatever team's winning, I yeah, that's right. I, I know, I know. It's funny because you know my wife went, it was a, it was a Grizz, and and also uh, she graduated from uh, from MSU, so oh. she's she's torn as well. It's so a house anyways. divided, yeah, yeah. So we're talking about ten thirty one exchange, it, like in a nutshell. And so you know, especially with me, I need a Casey. What you've noticed over the the last year, I need a everything in a nutshell, right? <laughs> I, can, can I need we, I need layman's terms. Can you give them the Cliff Notes version? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you know, we we're talking about a book. I'm like, man, I'm telling you what, that was the best book for one chapter. <laughs> That's about all I, all I get through. But what, like, what, gentlemen, what is a tax deferred exchange? And again, thank you so much for being here. I'll tell you what, one of the things that this is Max, and I, one of the things that I'd like to just uh, start out with Please. is that everybody thinks that 1031 exchanges are, are a loophole in the tax code. Um, we're in our 101st year. Uh, 1031 has been a part of the tax code since 1921. Oh. And uh, it's really a fairly taxpayer-friendly code section. Uh, and the thing about 1031 exchanges is if they're done property, it allows a taxpayer to sell a property that they've held for a period of time that's an investment property or property that they've used for a business purpose, whether it's a Main Street business, whether it's a farm, ranch, uh, you know, a commercial building, um, storage units, that type of thing. They can sell that, and as long as they uh, go through the, the necessary hoops, dot the I's, cross the T's, uh, and, and do it properly, they can defer the capital gain tax, both the federal and the state, wow. you know, and, and just keep rolling over their investment and keep uh, adding to their uh, to their real estate portfolio. I have a real stupid question. Is is it a good idea to pay your taxes? <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> just asking for a friend. Yeah, I, know. I was just asking. <laughs> I, was, I know it's so funny. I get in I get into real estate. I'm like, what's a 1099? Didn't they take taxes out? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oops. So is it when you? So if you're going to go sell, uh, and we're, we'll we'll get into like, so I mean, like, what kind of properties like can if it could qualify for, or what does the status of the property have? To to be in order to offset this tax or kick the can down the road, if you will. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great that's a great question. So it all comes down to you know the qualified use requirement mm-hmm. under the code and what you've held that property for. Sure. So um, qualifying assets include commercial real estate, agricultural, farm and ranch, rental real estate. It's actually pretty broad. I mean, obviously it you know excludes you know vacation and second homes, and it excludes your primary residence. But if you're if you're holding that property uh, and you're, you're generating income from it or you, you're using it, uh, you're holding it for investment, you can you know, include just raw land parcels, too, yeah. that you've held for investment. Yeah. All of those types of properties are eligible for tax deferred treatment as long as you've met that, that general rule that you've held it for you know, two years and, and you've held that asset and it, and it met, meets up with what the code you know, describes as uh, – qualifying asset. So, uh, you know, it's actually great you know, to get that information out there to yeah. let folks know that, hey, you, if you've got this in your portfolio, it's eligible for exchange treatment under Section 1031. Hmm. Yeah, that's... And, I mean, and, you know, one of the things that one of the things to further clarify, sometimes it can be held for less than two years, as long as the taxpayer acquired the property with a bona fide intent to hold it for the requisite purposes. Right. And another thing mm-hmm. that, you know, just add to what Jonathan says, you know, the whole broad range of properties is basically, you know, everything but the kitchen sink. But there's a lot of people that are even sell conservation easements on land that they own, and they take the money from the sale of those conservation easements, you know, creating green space, open space for the general public and, and for wildlife habitat, uh, you know, for 
riparian riparian uh, areas and that type of thing, mm-hmm. they can take the money from that and use that to acquire other types of real property. Wow. Um, I mean, we've even had people that uh, sold the rights to museums to mine for paleontological, for dinosaur bones, wow. in other words, wow. you know, that have taken money from those sales and used them to acquire, say, a commercial property someplace or a storage facility someplace, That's uh, residential rental stuff. Yeah. No, that, I, mean, that, I mean, it's like amazing. you're kind of kicking the can down the road. Right. But, you know, the, the thing is, is that t- depending upon the, the tax bracket the taxpayers in, whether it's the 15 percent or 20 percent federal rate, then you add the effective state rate of 5 percent. You know, and if it's, uh, you know, uh, up above a certain level, the net investment tax kicks in at 3.8 percent. The tax payer could be paying up to 29 percent or close to 29 wow. percent in capital gains taxes if they just cash out and don't do an exchange well when you stay, take that big a bite out of the out of the closing check when the sale takes place why not and if you're just going to reinvest in property why don't you just reinvest in property because as far as i'm concerned it's one of the best investments down going down the road right now yeah there's there's and nobody and you're in that market yeah. you, you can vouch for that yeah there's nobody that said you know what i'm just so i'm i can't believe uh yeah, and there's not a person in the world that didn't want to buy any property anywhere 30 years ago. And, and, and you know, you think it's appreciated a little bit, even just the last year. Just a smidge. Know, going up 30%, okay. starting to level out now. So so one of the reasons, it's like, so a person's weighing this to considering, well, oh, do I do a 1031 or do I just, I mean, wh- why would they want to exchange versus sell and, and, and simply pay the taxes? Like, what are some of the, 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 the greater motivations for that? It's a tax planning tool and, and it's a, a generational wealth tool. Right. Yeah, that's so, a great yeah, word. Whereas it's not, yeah, that's the best way to look at this. It's not yeah. necessarily, no, it's not tax free. It's a tax deferred exchange. So you right. aren't kicking the can down the road. Right. That said, you're continuing to build assets in your portfolio over time and increasing. You're starting with, a, you know, one property or two properties and then you've turned your portfolio of, you know, 1031 property into right. you know a, a, this broad base and you have a low basis well what? your heirs and, and you know upon you know you know any kind of uh death or something mm-hmm. like that in the family or you know they're going to get a step up in basis to the fair market value at the time of that that on that day so essentially mm-hmm. they're not going to be held to this low basis in property so it's a great wealth yeah. management and wealth building tool for generational wealth people need to That's people need to look at it people need to really look at that i uh we're just starting i'm 46 i, I know i don't look a day older than 90 <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, I, I hey, hey, like, but i'm like i'm kicking myself I'm like why did i start doing this stuff you know um I, why did i do a 1031 exchange on some of these properties but building generational wealth is one of our one of our you know things that we're we're trying to do with the agents on our team and just introduce them to this world. And so I would love to have you come over and, and definitely talk about that. But, you know, let's take an example. So someone buys a property in Dillon, Montana, right? They, they bought it as an investment property or for a rental and it's it's $400,000. I want to paint a picture, a layman's picture of how could we build generational wealth, starting with, I'm on second, there's a property now for sale down there on, on uh, that new subdivision behind Safeway, right? Um, I wanted to buy it, but it went under contract. It was two hundred. Ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars. I wanted a place to stay during the duck season, and and uh, you know where I didn't have to pay a thousand dollars a month uh, or a night or or a weekend mm-hmm. to stay at this wonderful place where I stayed this last weekend, right? Mm-hmm. So I buy that three hundred thousand dollar house. It, run me through an example of how you've seen people springboard off an initial investment and you know roll that into something else using a ten thirty one, and it could just be hypothetical. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll just jump in, and Jonathan, you can, yeah. you can add on anything you, you see I'm missing. But basically, I mean, if you if you acquired that property for $300,000, yep. I mean, that's your basis. That's yep. the basis that Jonathan was just talking about. Yep. And say so you hold on. I mean, you, you do a lot of duck hunting. You come on down here. You spend some time there. And, it, and you can use it for personal use, mm-hmm. you know, up to 14 days a year, Great. you know, without messing up your opportunity to do a 1031 later on. There's also a revenue procedure that was issued back in 2008 that basically says that you can use that property for personal use up to 10% of the time that you otherwise have it rented out yeah. or in a rental pool. So, I mean, you conceivably could use it for up to 30 days a year for your own personal use or immediate family use yeah. and not and not mess up its, its, its status as a 1031 property. Awesome. Okay, so it appreciates in value. You, you hold it for five years. Maybe your kid comes down here and goes to college. 
because uh, he likes to fish too, but he, he's also a great student. Yep. And and after he's out of college, he decided, well, uh, let's sell this property. And by that time, it's worth 600000 bucks. Yeah. Okay? So you've got $300,000 in capital gain. And you've been rented out, so you've probably taken some depreciation deductions on it too. So that's decreased the basis. Let's say your basis is now down to 200000 So you've got a $400,000 gain on that $600,000 yeah. sale. Yeah. You take that. You take the sale proceeds. You, you go through the sale. At the time that sale closes under the exchange agreement we'd have in place with you, that $600,000 uh, comes to us. If you've got some debt payoff that, you know, you know, maybe you still owe 200000 on it because you financed a portion of the purchase. Yeah. Um, you know, that debt's paid off. We receive $400,000 cash. We take the $400,000 cash and you have to exchange equal up in value on replacement properties. So you'd come in with $200,000 of your own money yep. or come in with a new loan on the acquisition of the replacement property and buy a replacement property for 600000 bucks. Yeah. Maybe you leverage it even more. Maybe you buy something for seven hundred, eight hundred thousand. I don't know. Yeah. And maybe you buy something now in Arizona because you want to end up eventually spending time down there, but you're going to rent it out. And I love that, this well, picture you're painting, you brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is sounding better yeah. and better all the time. Hey, you know, there was uh, about four I, months I ago I wanted to be in Arizona, baby. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. So, I so you to, take the I six. To a so, lot of guys. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I talk to a lot. I talk to a lot of guys like you, or a lot of a lot of people like you. Yeah. So uh, but say, go ahead with your example. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we we got the six hundred thousand. So we got to go. We got to make sure it's six hundred mm-hmm. or over, right? So, so we take that four hundred thousand mm-hmm. equity. We, maybe we go from the single family residence, and we say now we want to buy potentially like an eight plex or a twelve plex, plex or a sixteen plex mm-hmm. or something that actually I'm not. I'm, I no longer duck hunt anymore because you know, uh, you know, just right. for whatever reason, or I'm going to do it somewhere else. And there's You're this amazing thing. There's an amazing uh, opportunity right across the street from Western to own a, a sixteen plex where we can rent it out to college students. So we would take that right. and we, we could, you know, write it out, run me through how if I went from like the 600,000 single family residents uh, hired you to do this for me. And then I, you know, I have a $1.2 million now building generational wealth property that I can go buy. What would that look like? Well, what you did, so we bought, we bought the new property with 600, with $600,000 of exchange value, but yep. you added another what? You're saying you, 600 you more. bought a yep. 16 plex or uh, yep. let's say an eight plex. I don't it, think you'd buy a 16 plex. That's for, probably yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dylan's become the new garden spot of the universe. That's anyway, right. But in any event, whatever we, whatever you bought that property for, so you, you've leveraged oh. it. Say we've got a $1.2 million property sitting here in Dylan now yep. or wherever. And you got to consider your basis is still two hundred is two, still two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars plus the additional amount of cash that you came in over and above the six hundred. So you've got you've got a basis of roughly eight hundred thousand dollars and a million two. I think my math is right. Yep. Okay, so you've got you still got that four hundred thousand dollar you know equity piece in there or that gain piece in there. Yep. So let's think down the pike another five years and and maybe what you did is um, you ended up holding that for a couple of years, but at some point in time, he decided, hey, you know, I'm going to find a place in Arizona, but I want a place where I can still go fishing in Dillon, um, at least as pond. So I end up converting one of those units to my own personal use. Yeah. And um, and and now, you know, the, the, the property continues to appreciate in value. You're in a position where maybe – uh, another five years down the pike, you can sell it for a million, a million six, a million yep. eight. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and what happens is because you part of that's your personal residence, you can allocate some of the value. You decide to sell it. You allocate some of the value to your personal residence. Remember, you and your wife can defer up to five hundred thousand dollars of gain, or if you're a single person, yep. two hundred fifty thousand dollars of gain. So on that sale, you can pull some of that cash out. You can use it to buy you know, buy another property or you can use it to go bet on the ponies at Santa Anita. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of getting the drift. You know where you're yeah. coming from, Jason. I, I, but, I love it. No, I mean, this this is great because what we have to do is we have to start thinking. I turned that 600 into 1.2, and now rather than just you know um, making maybe two or three hundred dollars a month over what my mortgage payment was or my debt service, now and that that other mm-hmm. thing, I turned that money didn't have to pay tax on it, so I can go buy something that's more. Um, I I was able to basically mm-hmm. now make myself 1,500 or 2,000 dollars a month 
month in excess ca- in, in cash flow or uh, or return mm-hmm. monthly. Never mind depreciation. Never mind uh, uh, cost segregation. Never mind any of that other stuff. And and uh, I, I'm building generational wealth without having to pay taxes now. Now uh, maybe at the end I'll go ahead and I'll ha- you know someone eventually is going to have to do that. But if it's my job to or, or my goal to leave a legacy for my children, well you know this is one mm-hmm. of the ways to do that is to keep hopscotching up uh, hopscotching up and think big. We're going to, um, t- that's amazing information. What we're going to do is we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about two or three properties a week that I have. And then we're going to ask our guests to stay on and potentially, or call back in here in the middle of next week. Cause I want to finish up this amazing conversation that we're having. Cause I think it's just so valuable. And also thank you for your service. I don't know what branch of military you're in. And also thank you for your, the service uh, when you were with law enforcement. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And we'll be right back after this. This is Real Estate Revolution. Hey, you've heard me talk about the volatility of the stock market right now. Hey, your friend Sean Hannity here to remind you that for years, I've always recommended I like bricks and mortar real estate. And right now there is a golden opportunity if you have the right local agent guiding you. Do it before interest rates go up. There's only one real estate agent that I'd call to navigate this market. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. He knows how to cut through all of the talk and to give you accurate information. Now, don't just take my word for it. Get online and read all the five-star reviews. Put the most experience and the best marketing to work for you. Look, the only thing more expensive than hiring an expert is hiring an amateur. Don't trust your home to just anyone. I've done the homework. Talk to the agent that I trust for the best advice. Call Jason at 552-4443. Online, jasonbakerteam.com. That's jasonbakerteam.com. From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. Welcome back to Real Estate Revolution Radio. And Jason, as always, uh, we, we have some featured properties we want to discuss. We do. We do. And that was so good, all that information on that 1031. Man, uh-huh. I'm telling you what. Man, it was good. So, okay, new listing, 17468 Monarch Lane, Frenchtown, Frenchtown oh. School Systems. Frenchtown. This thing is, this is a, th- this is a, a, a three bedroom. It's got three bathrooms. I'm um, t- built in 2004. The thing is in immaculate condition, amazing yard, listed at 625,000. Yeah. Um, the basement is unfinished, okay? And so Some you can go there. down there and, you know, if you're a little handy, more handily, <laughs> handier than me, uh, you can finish that off, you know, for some instant equity right there or, you know, more living room and whatnot. Um, the, another one we just listed is on 162 Middle Burnt Fork in Stevensville. Okay. Okay. This is all main level living. It's, uh, you know, this thing is over 2,000 square feet. It's on an acre, all cool. right? It's, it, they've just repainted the outside. Gorgeous manicured lot. And that's listed at 575000 Not bad. Yeah, and yeah. it was. And that, that was uh, an expired listing. Um, and now it is back on the market, a new price. And we are excited to be, we are honored to be, mar- you know, representing them this time. Yeah, okay? Middle Burt Fork's great. It is, yep. And then we just listed another one at 13601 Crystal Creek Road in yeah. Clinton, Montana. This is a five-bedroom, three-bath home. What I love about this, it's kind of a tri-level, multi-level, mm-hmm. big garage, awesome backyard with, I mean, I'm talking about like water features, beautiful area that they just did, super good curb appeal. It's awesome. And um, it's like the the master bedroom's over here, and then you're like, kids, get over on the other side of the house. You know what I mean? A little <laughs> privacy for the parents, you know? Yeah. So it's really, I love the layout of that house. It's so cool. Main living area, and then up into the bedrooms, and then down. So it's really awesome. So I want you to check that out. And um, what was the price on it? So the price on that is eight forty nine nine. Still not bad. Five yeah, bedroom, no, three gosh, bath. this thing is. I mean, it is just. It's a custom home. It's great rock work out front. It's just gorgeous. Uh, those are three really awesome offerings that we've just brought to market. Mm-hmm. Um, we're having some action on them. So you know, hopefully, uh, you know, if people want to go look at them, just just call me. Yeah. You know, four zero six five five two four 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 three. But all of my listings are always at the very bottom. 
of the of our webpage, jasonbakerteam.com. That's a beautiful thing about radio. So many thousands of people, you know, between Hannity and Peter and mm-hmm. the show that we do here, 26,000 people a day basically are hearing this thing. And thousands of them a month go to our website. Yeah. And they can see all of our listings right down there at the bottom. They can search for properties. And if they want a home value, they click the home value button and they can get a, a robot will make that. But I'll call and give you a real one after that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a better number. Yeah, I'll give you I know a real number. I'm like, I'm like, where did the computer come up with that damn number? So, but anyways, but it's a good way to engage with me so that I can do a real one for you. Yeah, it's a real, real what was it again? So it's jasonbakerteam.com and yep. it's 406-552-4443. Or you can just Google us, Jason Baker Team, and all those awesome reviews. You know, those people I paid to give me a nice review. Will be on there. <laughs> and we're looking forward to having our friends from Accruit back yes. on next weekend. Gosh. And if you missed any of our chat uh, with yeah. the guys today, you can always listen to us on demand at newstalkkgvo.com. Until next Sunday, Jason, thank you so much. You're awesome, buddy.